I will make dua for you. And if you will, he gave him the option, be patient and it's better for you. He said, no, make dua for me. So the Prophet promised him he will make, give, make dua for him. Now, does the Messenger of Allah betray the promise? Does the Messenger of Allah betray the promise? So what do we learn from this hadith? That he made dua for this man. Again, it's the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu not he himself, not he himself, as the Christians put Jesus between them and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Thirdly, uh, yeah, thirdly, the Prophet Sallallahu must have made dua for him. But that, that was not enough. The Prophet Sallallahu that was enough for the Messenger of Allah. But he wanted actually this man to go into the extra step. Why? Did we learn earlier that one of the means of seeking nearness to Allah is through righteous deeds? Yes or no? So if you were to ask, just to give you, let me give you a classical, practical example. If you were to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His names and attributes and through your righteous deeds and you ask a righteous man to make dua for you, isn't that more likely that your dua will be accepted rather than using only one? Yes or no? So even though he asked the Messenger of Allah to make dua for him, the Messenger of Allah wanted the man to also get involved in the process. So he told him, go make wudu and go do salah and you make dua also. So now you're making dua through your deed, you're putting before Allah salah, your love to the Prophet and my dua for you. Now this is a combination for your dua to be accepted. If, that, if the tawassul was only through the message of Allah's status, then this would be of no point. There would be no point telling him, go make wudu and go make salah and make this dua. It would have been granted for the man automatically. Subhanallah al -Azim. Furthermore, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as it comes in some of the narrations, now the end of the hadith says, Allahumma fashaffi'ni fih this is a very technical term. It says, O oh Allah, accept his supplication. Accept, it, it's the, the shafa'ah can mean intercession, but it really doesn't mean that. Let me give you, let me give you the verbatim because I don't want to misquote this. In the dua which Allah's Messenger وسلم, taught him to say, there occurs, O oh Allah, accept him as a supplicant for me. Accept him as a supplicant for me. And it is impossible to take this to mean tawassul by his person or his status or his right. Since the meaning is, O oh Allah, accept his supplication for you to restore my sight. Accept his supplication for you to restore my sight. Shafa'a in the language means dua. Shafa'a means dua. And this is what is meant by the shafa'a which is established for him and for the other prophets and the pious on the day of resurrection. This shows that shafa'a is more particular than dua. Shafa'a is more particular than dua. Since it will only occur if there are two people seeking a matter. The dua, you do it directly to Allah. Shafa'a, there's someone who will do shafa'a for you. Like the Prophet Sallallahu will have the shafa'a al-kubra on Yawm al-Qiyamah. When everyone will be suffering from heat and perspiration, they will go to the Messenger of Allah and he will ask Allah to begin the judgment. This is the shafa'ah. Now they ask Allah directly, Allah does not respond to the kuffar. Allah does not respond to the people at, on that day. How does he accept? Through the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That is the meaning of the word shafa'ah. So, it is established by this means also that the tawassul of the blind man was through his dua, not his person. Otherwise, that last statement will make no sense. That last statement will make no sense. From what the Prophet taught the blind man to say was, and accept my supplication for him, meaning accept my shafa'ah. This sentence is an authentic part of the hadith. It is reported by Ahmad and al-Hakim, who authenticated it, and al-Dhahabi agrees. And it is alone a, a decisive proof that taking the hadith to refer to tawassul by this person is futile. And that be in the pers uh, position of some recent writers, those who claim that this is how the tawassul is done. They claimed, that the hadith means that I am seeking nearness to you Allah through the Messenger of Allah's status. But the hadith says, فَشَفِّعْنِي فِيهِ وَشَفِّعْهُ فِيهِ Accept my intercession for him and accept his intercession for me. That sentence would not make sense. It would not make sense unless the earlier meaning was dua. Otherwise, how would this man's intercession apply for the Prophet? 
How can a man intercede for the Prophet? Can a man, the blind man, intercede for the Prophet ﷺ? It is impossible. So the meaning will be impossible. Furthermore, if this was correct, if this was correct, if it was, if it was not the dua of the Prophet ﷺ, it was only doing tawassal to him. Any blind man today can come and make the same dua and he will be healed. Where are they? Where are they? The same people that actually do tawassul, tell them, bring the blind people and make him make the same dua. Oh Allah, I seek nearest youth, be Muhammad al Then let Allah restore his sight. You know what? From back then until today, we don't have a single incident where someone's sight was restored. Why? They did not get the dua of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa You understand? The tawassul is there. The tawassul, the, the same idea which according to them the man applied, can be applied to any person today. However, no one can make this dua today and Allah will restore their sight in this fashion. And if that was the case, then the dua will be in void. But that means that the whole thing was revolving around the dua of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is that clear? Is that clear? So then, we say, for the man was asking the Messenger of Allah to make dua. The hadith begins, Ud'u Allah li, supplicate to Allah for me. And Prophet told him to make dua. And he told him that he will make dua for him. The whole thing, and then, oh Allah, accept my intercession. Then he did shafi'u fiya. The whole thing is revolving around the shafa'a, meaning the shafa'a through the dua of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to this man. No excuse. These are the only two narrations they have. And as you have seen, they do not hold any water. They do not hold any water. And the vast majority, and you look at the narrations, and you look at Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, you will find that they do not accept this means of tawassul. So if you, my brothers or sisters in Islam, or your relatives, or people you know, continue to use this man, this manner of getting to Allah or getting near to Allah, then we need to stop and advise them to stop. Stick to the Sunnah and the Quran. Oh Allah, I ask you by your beautiful names to give me. Oh Allah, I ask you by the good deeds which you have blessed me with. Oh Allah, and or, Ya Akhi, make dua for me. That's it. That's it. These are the three that are allowed. Anything else is either shirk or bid'ah. This last one, by the way, to be honest, is not shirk. It's an innovation which may lead to shirk. The shirk one is calling on the dead man or the live man directly. This one is asking Allah through the intermediary. Which is not necessarily shirk, but may lead to shirk. But if it's a bid'ah, what does that mean? Allah will not accept it. Allah will not accept it. So we as Muslims need to stick to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not innovate anything into his deen. Shaykh al-Sahab ibn Taymiyyah says, the understanding of the Sahaba and the righteous predecessors was, At-tawassul ila Allahi bi du'aihi wa shafa'atihi fi hayatih fi dunya wa bi du'aihi wa shafa'atihi fi hayati al-ukhra. The understanding of the Sahaba of the word tawassul is that they seek nearness to Allah through the dua and the intercession of the Prophet in his life. And they will seek the same thing in the life to come. And they will seek the shafa'a through his dua and his shafa'a in the life to come. This is how they understood tawassul. This is why if you read the biography of all the Sahaba, you will never find any one of them teaching us in his dua, Oh Allah, I ask you by the status of the Prophet that you give me such and such. Never. Because they did not understand that, nor did they apply it in their lives. This is an innovative, innovative way to get near to Allah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept. So what do we say at the beginning or what do we say at the end? The deen of Islam came to close all doors of shirk. Islam did not leave any 